nature has evolved a number of uh, motors, uh, and they do this inside a cell along tracks. Um, you can imagine them as, as railroad tracks uh, that where they carry cargo that could be proteins or other lipids or other molecules, and they ship them from one part of the cell to the other. So the biological motors in, in nature um, uh, consist of motor proteins uh, that is, typically have two legs, and they travel by reversely binding and unbinding to the track by consuming ATP and then using that fuel to move forward. And they do it incredibly efficiently. Uh, they are the most uh, efficient motors we know of today. Ever since we, we as scientists discovered uh, these biological motors, we've been interested in recreating them and, and building synthetic versions of motors. These motors are incredibly slow. Uh, the, the fastest of these motors will, will travel about a nanometer uh, per minute. And, and the reason uh, why you, you, it's difficult to design DNA motors that are faster than this is because of this fundamental trade-off between speed and, and fidelity. Essentially, on one axis, you, you, uh, you can increase the speed of a motor by, by giving it fewer legs. And so a DNA motor that has two legs, for example, is faster than the one that has three or four legs. But um, the problem of having fewer legs is that the motor is more likely to come apart. The way we, we solve the problem is, is in a very counterintuitive way. Uh, what we did is instead of uh, having a motor that walks along a track, we decided to test the idea of having a motor that rolls. Our motor at any given time has about a thousand legs that are in contact with the surface. Nearly 100% of them make it to the finish line and, and they can travel up to distances up to millimeters. The best DNA motors up to date uh, uh, would, would require about 20 years to travel distance of one centimeter. In contrast, um, our rolling motors can, uh, can travel a centimeter in about a week. Uh, there's some particles there. As soon as we, we realize that uh, we're able to uh, monitor these, these motors using low-end objectives or low-end optics, we started wondering how we can sort of uh, translate this into a real-world application. So the idea that, that we came up with, and this is really a graduate student's idea, this Kevin Kevin Yell's um, idea, which was uh, to take advantage of uh, a cell phone, a cell phone CCD as, as a camera readout. And in order to allow a CCD, a camera on your, on your smartphone, to visualize the motion of one of these particles, what you need is a, is a magnifying lens. Kevin uh, was able to take advantage of a, of a plastic lens derived from a toy laser pointer. And to take this, this uh, plastic lens and simply glue it onto his smartphone, and to use that um, as the readout. So, so cell phones are very attractive because they can collect the data and they can transmit it uh, in the field without uh, needing an external power source in very resource limited settings. So we think that this really uh, will get the entire DNA field excited into, into um, really thinking some of these applications are, are within arm's reach now because um, it, it means a lot of these, these what, what used to be science fiction is, is now not so far away.